tell you balls fishing. Guess what today is? It's Rod Appreciation Day. Yeah, we all celebrated as anglers, right? Our bank accounts don't. That was a joke. It wasn't funny, but yeah, Rod Appreciation Day to me is lice fishing. We're, we're offshore fishing because guess what? Mike loves to do that. So that's what we're doing. We're in an interesting predicament though. We got a bunch of rain. It's washed out. So normally ledge fishing or offshore fishing is done out on the main lake like like oh there main river channel you know if you got a big lake you're not going to fish like the backs of pockets or points on pocket you're going to fish like smack dab out in the middle but because we got all this rain there is the brownest toiletiest water out there right now like it looks like an outhouse dude and although there might be fish out there don't get me wrong and there probably are shallow and that I hate fishing that stuff and it frustrates me and it gets in my head. So I'm gonna fish my strengths, which is semi-clear, semi-stained water and see what I can figure out. It's also a great opportunity too and we've talked about this in past videos. I'm all about fishing small. Now small is relative, dude. So what this is gonna allow me to do, a lot of these creeks, we're in Town Creek right now, I think it's called, but a lot of these creeks have clear water in them. So aside from the main lake, you know, there's all these like giant kind of micro lakes that have some clear water that I like to fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on those sort of those, those micro lakes. And it's something that you can do too. And it, it doesn't require that you have nasty water either. It actually helps you to kind of frame in your head and cover water better, be more detail oriented. And I don't know about you guys, I come from a small boat background to talk about it a lot. I, this is how I approach stuff. Even when I fish Lake Okeechobee, dude, I was boat ramp jumping. Like, I would never run 25 miles to go somewhere. Donnie Bass would. And it was scary sometimes when I ride the boat. But go check out my boy Donnie Bass on Instagram. But but in any case, the, like it allows you to kind of segment things, break them down, and fish a little small. Because in a lot of these lakes that we're fishing, there are fish all over. There are tons of fish. There are tons of fish that never get tapped into and caught. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to fish small. We're going to avoid the mud toilet water because that's disgusting. And it kind of smells even. But make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Your support for the videos, dude, is blowing this channel up. And what's best about it is it's all grassroots. It's not challenge videos. It's not product teases from some random like sponsor stuff. I go fishing. I tell you what I learn. I show it to you. If you like the videos, you watch them. If you want to learn something, if it'll help you on your lake, you watch them. Otherwise, you don't watch them. I mean, it's, it's a simple, we have a simple good relationship, right? But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications because YouTube doesn't like my videos. And hit that like button. And uh Let's go fishing. Beautiful Lake Gunnerville is calling to us. <laughs> what the? That's a mean mouth, dude. That joker just came up and ate it. That's crazy. Look at all them basses. Them's a lot of basses. So when I'm fishing offshore, I have a real like static practice. You know, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. When I find fish, I'll mark where they start and where they end. And then basically I'll try to figure out which way the current's coming and I'll put the boat, be boat behind that. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab my um, my Lorenz Ghost. I'm gonna deploy it, boom. Nice and easy, put my foot down on it. I'm gonna turn this here, this here graph on. And then I'm gonna use my range rings, if you can see on there, to kind of line myself up right behind my my school line right there and then i'm gonna hit spot lock and i'm gonna cast to them and then from there i'll adjust my my boat location but really getting that initial boat location set up is huge for for putting a good line on them and really tapping into them Getting them fired up. Getting caught a few times, huh, honey? Oh, that's your white bass. Got him that time. Came back for it. Guys, we've been on this pod. I don't know how big he is. Staying down. Oh, solid three pounder, two and a half. But I had to get out the drop shot. It broke off my my um my wobblehead rig. 
But just getting these guys fired up has been the key. They're down there. But making it happen has been, uh, been a wee bit tricky. Fish on. That's a better one. Switched up crankbaits. And, uh, oh yeah, that's a giant. And we got a giant and my nuts all wrapped up. And I think he's only got one hook. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Oh, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> that right there is a Gunnersville stud, boys. A Gunnersville stud. So we, we actually were throwing all these little dinky girly baits at this thing, at this ledge in the school of fish. And uh, we picked up a, it's a six cents crankbait. And yeah. Well, that's what you want to start today, guys. Check this joker out. Like, look at the shoulders on her. <laughs> Here, I get you back. All right, best thing you gotta do though, as it gets these warmer temperatures, you gotta get these things released. So let's let this big old girl go. Look at that thing. <laughs> so angry look how fat she is you know it brings up something kind of interesting guys and uh, we, we've been fishing this ledge for like 20 25 minutes throwing a lot of dinky stuff at it caught a couple little guys on a drop shot but I went and picked up this this six cents crankbait and literally just started grinding the bottom like grinding it and sometimes dude when you see them down there and you're struggling to actually catch them like making them react. It's either gonna blow out the school or you're gonna get one or two big bites because those fish can't stand something just blazing and digging bottom. It's something I learned in Florida, but give that a try if you're fishing offshore. Because we had to downsize, um, I got a little, it's a little tiny Kytec 2.8 on a 3 8 ounce finesse head. And, um, you know, there's been a ton of traffic on the lake today. And uh, it, it's really screwed these fish up. So adapting a little bit, we went from catching them like super hardcore to like freaking trying to uh, be a little more finesse. But it's a 2.8 Kytec on a 3 8 ounce fine wire hook. So I got to watch it a little bit. I don't know how big this fish is. It was a solid one, but just like a little two and a half, three pounder. But I'm telling you, I can mark them, and I marked a bunch of schools. And uh, yeah, you can't get them to bite. Like they're not in the mood. There's there's fishing pressure, and uh, they're a little annoyed. <laughs> they're not happy with all the wakes. I don't think they don't like that. The, the big schools of fish, they don't like all that boat traffic. You know, I'm really starting to figure out this retrieve. Like staying down towards the bottom and just really slow rolling and bumping the bait off the bottom seems to be key. And that's when I can really tell I'm getting a bass bite versus like a rough fish, like a white bass or something else. Or catfish, I'm renowned for catching catfish. Let me show you what we're throwing though. It's, um, I can't take credit for it. It's uh, Alabama Bassing kind of like showed me to do it on Gunnersville. We were out one day, we didn't get a video, but fishing was a little rough. And uh, dude busted out the Kytec on a little um, on a little micro ball head. Take a look at that thing right there. Super simple. It's a 2.8 Kytec, 3A Scottsboro twist lock um, fine wire hook ball head. Super finesse. And dude, I can see him down there. I've thrown. I have every single rod, drop shot. I have a hair jig. I have a, a football jig. I got a crankbait. I got a scrounger. Dude, they won't touch nothing. So we're literally inching that thing along the bottom trying to squeeze out a few bites
Yeah, we got a line on a shell bar, boys. And that might... And we got them excited. They are excited. Did you know in French, if you say, I'm excited, it actually means you're sexually excited? Well, a little sidebar for you guys. She's coming up. She's going to purge. Come here. <laughs> and she come off. Oh, whatever. That was fun. I better check my hook. That was pretty cool. So let me show you how you rig up this uh, this little bit of finesse thing. So one thing you want to check is your hook. See, I'm opening it up. I bend it back a few times, and after a while, then I'll just swap it out. It's not a flaw in construction. It's just, it's a fine wire hook. It's finesse fishing, so it's a tiny hook, but we got a Scottsboro ball head. Um, I got a two, or it's a 3.3 Kitek. Might actually try a, a little easy in a little bit. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna measure it out, just like you do with a goat, see where it comes out. And you're going to thread that joker on, just like that. And on the Kitex, there's a little slot right there. And you're gonna bring your hook right out that slot. It's usually about three quarters of the way back. And you can see, still got a screwer on. So I'm just going to, I always get confused. Just to, there we go. And then you wrap the tail as you do it. And it's just gonna screw up so it holds on. Only problem with the Kitex and the, and the screw lock stuff is, like, so they even, they rip out. It actually, the hook ends up ripping through there. It is what it is. It's a super soft, it's like the robo worm of swim baits. It's a super soft swim bait, but that's your rig. It's a super finesse um, swim bait rig. If you're ever on super finicky or just, weary fish if you're out on a holiday if you're out on the weekend and there's a ton of boat traffic in the summer give this rig a try it, it kills it dude fish on she's a little bigger than that Kind of got them lined up. That's the other thing that's really important with this school fishing. So this school is kind of broken up and scattered. There's been a lot of guys fishing it, and there, there's not much water to fish. As we talked about, a lot of the water's super muddy right now. Come on up here. She ang oh, it's a little bigger than I thought. I thought she was only like two pounds. It's like a two and a half, three pounder. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Get in there. Nice. Dude, and just destroyed the Kitek. But wh what what we're doing is you get a little line on a shell bar. How about that? Let me let her go real quick. You get a little line on a shell bar or a, or a little hard spot and you just keep plunking it, dude, and keep bonking it and they'll bite it. You hear all those waves? That's not wind. That is the 47,000 people that are out here today. It is one of the, the early hot days in summer. Like people are everywhere, which is fine, dude. I love when everybody comes out to enjoy the lake. It, it makes the fishing a little bit tough. You have to adapt, but I'm happy with today, dude. We caught one almost six, like an absolute giant. But one key that I want to tell you with any of this like summer offshore fishing that I've drawn from Florida, and I'm starting to pick up here, is it's absolutely manic. That's like the one word, manic. Not like, like a psychological issue, but kind of like that. Like literally, dude, you're either, you know, we got it from my box of crankbaits right here. You're either like blazing the bottom and like churning and tearing it up with one of these, or you're fishing like some little, you know, little baby swim bait, little Kitek or a little Ned rig. Oh, it's a cute little Ned. You get the idea. So it, it's very back and forth. And you'll find that even when you think you're on a Mondo Mega School, this fish can behave like they're not even there. And that's kind of what happened towards the end of the day. We found a small pod this morning and it was set up nicely, but the boat traffic churned up. We caught that, that five and a half, six, caught some other little guys, but ground through the day, dude, ran a bunch of stuff, didn't see much of anything, and finally came back to a school that I found earlier. And I wasn't able to catch a fish out of it the first time I found it. So basically we settled down and this Kitek was really the star at the end of the day. No giants, but we call it a three pounder and a couple two and a halfs, but it's just, it's that, it's a Kitek, I think 3.3 on a three ace ounce Scottsboro. It's a fine wire hook. It's basically a finesse swim baiting and I throw it on 12 pound test. That's a seven foot halo TI medium. So it's a little bit lighter rod. But dude, I just kind of settled down and said, I need to figure out how to catch these fish. And shout out to Alabaster TV, um, or Alabaster, 
Um, yeah, it's El Vesta TV. He doesn't have a channel anymore. He's an awesome dude. But um, he kind of showed me one day we come out and, and he kind of slayed him, dude. Like on a tough day, a bunch of two pounders, you know, I think a three pounder he caught too. But like I couldn't catch him on your standards, you know, like a true bass, uh, you know, a scrounger, a hair jig. Couldn't do it, dude. Like the fish knew all that, that boat motor stuff was going on. And so he had to downsize. And I literally used that tip today. And I think if I would have found some more schools, I could have used it on those as well. Super slow fishing. I'm talking just turning the reel, bumping the bottom. But it's something that you want to try because these fish are either going to eat it because it's so active, so aggravating, so trigger triggered, bro. They get triggered. So like crankbait, you know, even like a wobblehead when you're reeling it, a swim bait when you're reeling it fast, like a, a scrounger when you're reeling it fast, hair jig, you know, a spoon, all those things. Or you're gonna really wanna slow down your presentations, whether it's like, I got a Nico rigged, or I had a Nico rig, but you know, football jig, half ounce football jig, Ned rig, I got a wacky rig drop shot, and then the key today was that little swim bait. But slow down, either go fast or slow down. That, that's usually the trick, and I'll give you another tip, start with the slow stuff. You don't break up the school if you start with the slow stuff. Try to catch a few, get them activated, and then throw that big, mean, hard reaction stuff at them. That five and a half, six we actually caught, we threw the drop shot and the Ned Rig first caught a few, and then we threw that crankbait and caught them. Crankbait though, I wanna show you this one. It's a kind of a cool bait. I lost the actual one that I was using, but I have a little bit different color. It's the exact same bait. Um, it's a six cents. I think this is the Crush or the DD. Um, it's, it's freaking sweet though, dude. This one I'll use when I want to aggravate them. I like a, a you know a 6XD, your standard 6XD, just like 90% of the time. But if I'm really looking to grind the bottom and create a reaction strike, this six cents, can't even get it out. Nice, we'll just show you right there. This six cents, it really does a drrr, has a very hard vibration, and it seems to kind of either trigger them or scare them away, which is pretty much what I wanted to do. But that's a wrap, dude. It's hot, I gotta get in. Sadly, Bog isn't with us, so if you're sad, give this, this video a dislike because it's too hot for him, so you probably won't see him for maybe like a month or so. But I'm gonna try to sneak him out when we do some evening trips. But thank you guys for watching. If you got any questions about offshore fishing, I absolutely love it. I'm no pro, but I have a bit of experience doing it, so drop them down in the comments box. But tight lines, I hope you're out fishing, getting a tan, catching bass, whether it's smallies, largemouth, or spotted bass, and just putting a grin on your face, dude. It's all smiles from here on out. Tight lines, guys, and we'll see you next time.